Hi, let's get into some graphics. I'm just doing this because I'm really dying to show you a few neat little techniques that you'll enjoy, really. We should really be starting with layout and working inwards from there, but everyone likes a bit of graphics. So what I'm going to show you today is a table reflection. You see it all over the place and it can work. So I'm just going to show you how I would make a copy of this box and have it shown as though on a reflective plastic shiny surface. So the first thing I need to do is probably make a surface. So I've got an empty image here. I'm going to create a new layer. And I'll double click it and call it table. I'm going to make it kind of light gray for now. So I've selected light gray as the foreground color. You edit fill with foreground color. Normally I would do alt and delete instead of that. I'm trying to show you as many Photoshop options as possible. Okay, so I want to deselect, I'll just click away. I could also apply a gradient to this. To my table. I'll reduce the opacity of the gradient. And I'm also going to drag the gradient upwards so that I get a little bit of a horizon line. Okay, so there I've got my table and I'm ready for my box. So let's go over to the other one. There's no select all. Literally press copy, control C, and I paste it onto here. Fortunately, it's already cut out so the background's transparent, otherwise, I would have had to. If you use selection tools to cut the thing out. So the first step to making a reflection is to duplicate the layer. Layer, duplicate layer. It comes up with the dialog box. I'll say box copy. And if I hold the shift key down while I'm on the move tool, I can move it only in 1945 degree directions. Undo. So I'm going to want this reflection to be underneath this box. The first thing I need to do is turn it upside down. I'm going to edit, transform. You can't see that on the screen. Flip vertical. So there we go. There is my upside down box. I'm actually going to move that layer beneath the original layer just because that makes more sense. And I'll call the original layer box. So here's my inverted box. Now you'll notice that because the box is not straight, I've got a gap here. So what I need to do is I need to skew the reflection to make it look like it, the bottom edge of the box meets the bottom edge of the reflection there and also there. In order to do that I'm going to have to make my image a little bit bigger. So the image canvas size so the dialog is 300 pixels high now. I'm going to make it 450 pixels high from the top. There we go. Now I'm going to control. When you're on the move tool, if you hold the control key down, control click that layer, selects that layer. This is in the older versions of Photoshop. The new versions have got better tools for selection. So I'm going to control click on the box. Hang on, let's copy and just see what. It looks good. So there. Now, I'll ungroup these now, the chain. So I need to skew this. Now, the way I do that is to zoom in. And literally, I'm going to do a very crude one. I'm going to select that portion, the front face of the box. Okay. I'm going to do Edit, Transform, Skew. Skewing literally drags it up to there. And then you do it in one direction. Click OK. Then I deselect, get the rest of my box. Using the arrow keys now. 
Charlotte zero. And I need to hit transform skew again. There we go, that's about parallel. And OK that. And deselect control on zero. As you can see now it's looking much more like the bottom of the box is a reflection of the top. Sometimes you have to be a bit more sophisticated than this, but this time it works. The, the next thing we're going to do is actually just make my reflection disappear a little bit. And one way to do that is through this opacity slider. You can slide it up and down. If you're on the, the move tool, you can also press the numbers on the keyboard. So if I press 4, it goes to 40% opacity. 2 is 20%. 9. 20%, 0 is 100%. You can also type 4 or 5 to make it 45%. I'm going to just put it to 80% for now, just to make it disappear just a little bit. And the other thing I'm going to do is I want it to be, I want the reflection to be stronger here near the box. I want it to disappear lower down. So the way I'm going to do that is with a layer mask. Layer, add layer mask, reveal all. So here, this is. This little box here refers to the actual graphics on the layer. This box now next to it, which is linked to it, the link icon there, this is a mask. Now the way that masks work, we go to my paintbrush tool, right click and select brush. Okay, the way that a mask works is I've clicked on mask so you can see I've got the mask icon there. If I click on the actual graphics, it goes to brush back to the mask. If I paint in black, which is the foreground color, it's painting black onto the mask. Now, where a mask is white, the graphics show up. Where a mask is black, the graphics are hidden. And in between, there's a gradient through the grays. Okay, so if I switch my colors over, I'm now painting white. You can see what it's done is it's hidden it's, it's only affected the mask which is then applied to the image i've not actually deleted anything of the actual graphic itself but all i need to do to make my reflection now is to put a gradient in my mask so i make sure i've got this last mask icon there so i'm working on the mask not the box itself select the gradient tool which shares its place with the paint bucket tool and my gradient is going to go from white to black which means from completely visible to completely hidden. I'm going to hold down the shift key to make sure that it's completely vertical. And if I do it, say from about here to about midpoint, and there you've got pretty quickly a half decent reflection. I can try maybe some other things. I could try changing the blend mode of the reflection. So select that and then just use the arrow keys to flick through, darken, multiply. Multiply looks quite good. Color burn, let's see, a much lighter one. Lighten the screen. They've all got slightly different properties. I think in this case, normal is okay. Another thing that I do quite often is change the saturation level because when this blue color is reflected off that gray surface, it should use, lose some of its color. So I'll go to image, adjust, hue, saturation, and luminance lightness and literally just reduce the saturation to make it a bit more gray. If I unlink this the reflections mask from the reflection and then click on the mask itself I can then use the move tool to move it up and down. I'm literally moving that gradient so you can see how it's affecting the thing itself. But it's still slightly unrealistic isn't it because we've got little line here between the between the reflection and the actual um, box. So what I might need to do is move the whole thing up just a touch. Yeah, that's definitely better. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some shadow around this. Now I can add a shadow to the box, but it's going to be applied in a particular way. So I'll show you layer style drop shadow make it come from above, 
which I usually do. And you see this shadow is being applied all the way around the image, which isn't really not what I want. I want the shadow to be just at the bottom only. So I'm going to change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a new layer in between the box and the background. I'm going to fill it with black and then I'm going to give make it blur. So I'm going to select my polygonal lasso tool. The normal lasso tool you just hold the mouse down and draw. But the polygonal one you click somewhere and then you click somewhere else. When you're done, you double click and it makes a polygon with straight lines. If you want it ever to go in a 45 and 90 degree circle, you just like with most, most things in Photoshop, hold down the shift key. So you go to there, you go to there, and I release the shift key because I'm going away from the 45. And then to here's my last one, so I double click. Okay, so this is going to be my shadow, so I'll name the layer. And to make it black, so I'll click the default colors, and then Alt Delete to fill it with black. If I deselect, now I have a black layer. Just undo. Now what I can do is select that layer here, and go Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. It's coming up with the dialog box to say, by how many pixels do you want to blur your layer? I drag this slider, see that it's giving me some, some blur there. I don't know if that's going to work. I'll deselect. I need to, it's definitely too strong right now, so I'm going to drop the opacity down. And also, really, I feel like it doesn't, I don't need to be seeing shadow on here. So what I'm going to do is actually change the transform of my layer. So I'll do edit transform, distort, I believe, is the way to do it. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm dragging in the top corners there to make sure that this shadow starts to disappear behind the box. That looks okay to me. Zoom out again, change the opacity back to 70. Just drop it down a tiny bit. And that's starting to look pretty good to me. Let's see what happens if I change the gradient on the table. Maybe if I flip it to reverse. So that's, that's still working quite nicely the opacity down. You can really play with these gradients quite a lot. It's lots of fun. I think that's everything I need to do with this. So that's how to make a simple and straightforward reflection.